I think you're going to enjoy it and be inspired. And you're going to leave tonight with a oomph in you that get you going. So before we do anything, though, let's say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you. To be right here tonight. To be right here tonight. In the midst of us. In the midst of us. You're alive. You're alive. And you're resurrected. And you're resurrected. And you are living. You are living. Right in the midst of us tonight. Right in the midst of us tonight. You're head and hair. You're head and hair. White like wool. White like wool. Your eyes. Your eyes. Like fiery eyes of love. Fiery eyes of love. Clothed with a garment. Clothed with a garment. All the way down to your feet. All the way down to your feet. Lord Jesus, Lord, Lord Jesus, your voice of many waters, your voice of many waters, flowing towards every one of us, towards every one of us, wave after wave, wave after wave, of your voice, your voice, beginning to work in us, beginning to work in us, move in us, move in us, flow through us, flow through us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now I ask you, Jesus. Now I ask you, Jesus. Clothe upon me, clothe upon me, with your heavenly life, with your heavenly life, power of the Holy Spirit, power of the Holy Spirit. Flowing out of you, flowing out of you, baptizing me, baptizing me, saturating my whole body, saturating my whole body, with your heavenly life, with your heavenly life, the water of life, the water of life. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Richard is going to come tonight. His story, however long it is, whatever it is, whatever he wants to say. Come on, Richard. Let's just lift our hands and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For Richard. For Richard. A new creation. A new creation. A king and a priest. A king and a priest. More than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. He's here. He's here. Thank you. Go Thank ahead. you. Very, they'd stay in it for months and months. 
that was to the time that polio was real prevalent right before they got the vaccine. Right. Thank you for uh, explaining that to uh, us. Amen. Yes. I have two older brothers. My brother Tony, 74 years old, and my brother David, my next oldest brother, was 72. He's 72 years old. He was a Baptist minister. He passed away one and a half years ago of Parkinson's disease. Mm. My family grew up poor, <clears throat> but God always provided for us. I went to work at age 16. I was underage at the time, but a deacon at our church knew my family needed money. So he hired me as a stock person. I kept the shelf stock and, and cleaned the floors. He was a manager at Silver Brothers at Downtown Treeport. I mean, I remember Silver Brothers. No. Me? No, I think it was before I came. I didn't oh. come here in 77. Ooh. I figured you'd be, you and Miss Carroll be the only one that remembered it. No, I, 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 I do. I remember. When did they go out of business? They went out of business you know. before you came. I thought that okay. was, they did. That makes sense. But uh, I was hired making a dollar twenty-five an hour. Amen. I know about that. <laughs> I was working after school and on weekends. I averaged around fifty dollars a week. Mm -hmm. That paid for a week's worth of groceries for my whole family. Mm -hmm. I mean, remember that? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. So. Uh, Okay. We always cooked a good meal for my family, like on Sundays. We sometimes had friends or the pastor over for lunch. Soon my two oldest brothers got jobs. My oldest brother, Tony, became a Shreveport firefighter. He made a career out of it. My brother David worked for Orchard Gas as a meter, meter reader. Later on in life, my oldest brother got married, and from that time, me and my younger brother John went to live with my dad and stepmom. My mother went to a nursing home. I started my career in the floor covering business in 1972. I'm still in that career now. Uh, <coughs> I've owned three different businesses in my life. I currently own People Choice Flooring and Remodeling. We have always increased sales every year since 22. My company sales was $1.4 million. I had a friend of mine, I will not mention his name. He called me, he was down on his luck looking for a job. I hired him, he grew up doing construction. His grandfather was a lifetime GC builder here. He built half of Bossier City and parts of Streetport. I know who Don that is. Coleman, Don yeah, Coleman. oh yeah, I know Don Coleman. Mm -hmm. uh, he sold all the construction side of the company. He collected all the monies and brought the money to me. I would deposit it in business account, never knew about cash the cash sales except what he told me. I was paying him 10% of total sales up front, which that was my first mistake, and paid him 5% to run the jobs. He would hire his own laborers and subcontractors for jobs. I was paying some of that along out of, out of the business account that he was already being paid for. It was to be making, I was supposed to be making clear after all costs, 10, 20 percent on the jobs. That didn't happen. More so than not. I never took much of the money. I put it back into the company. I've always did a profit and loss statement for every job I've ever sold, and I've been doing this a long time. I tried to get him to use that profit and loss on all his sales, 
he had his own way of doing it, and I let him do it his way. That's the second mistake. I never knew about the jobs unless I asked him. I trusted him. I believed with what he told me. I do. I do know he was trying to save money hiring unqualified <coughs> people. Uh, for instance, uh, like someone would be walking down the road and he would stop and ask them if they wanted to work. And often, uh, them being paid pennies on the phone, <coughs> he would tell them what he would pay them in the hours of work. He paid way less for a qualified person for the scope of work to be done. There were always problems with jobs, costing me more money and cutting into <coughs> In 2022, my company sold $990,000 in sales. My salesman underbid a lot of jobs. And I want to act like I'm, I guess in a way I am kind of putting it all on him because he had his own books he kept. But anyway, in, in uh, 2022, the company sold $990,000 sales, underbid a lot of jobs in, in the company in 2023, we sold $1.4 million. I haven't seen proof this was his own bookkeeping. I was told I lost $300,000 in, in that year. Uh, there were three customers <coughs> that sued me and went criminally against me for $40,000. I turned myself into Bolger Max. I served three months and then my family bonded me out. I was out of jail for two months. My court date was April the 5th at 9 a.m. I was to find out who my court appointed attorney would be. I went to the front, talked to the judge. I found out who my attorney was and there were two more people that went criminally against me. So. I went back to jail on a $130,000 bond. I wasn't going to ask my family to get me out. I served time from April 5th to November the 28th. This was the day I took the charge. My restitution is $97,000. I had 33 months to pay that back. That's $3,000 a month. I know God will provide that could, could, and will, that could and will happen. It's de developing through the pipeline now. God is already working on this. I know in my heart, because he's in me, he's with me everywhere I go. He stays two steps in front of me and two steps behind me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The good thing is I get over half of my restitution with my social, social security check every month. Now, how I ended up here at Christian Development Center. I've never have heard of them my whole 67 years. I've been here in Shreveport all my life. I also have never had anything on my record, no police records uh, at all, as much as a speeding ticket. My whole life, my whole life. My wife divorced me while I was in jail. The George judge awarded her everything. I, I'm going to contest that, but uh, all the investments and the money that I put in that house, and I was paying all of my wife's bills, and none of them were mine. And Anyway, I'm not going to thread on that, but <sighs> see. I couldn't go to the court dates because I was incarcerated and Bozier Max didn't take me. I would have been there and planned on being there. My court date for the felony was April the 5th. I went to jail. My court date for divorce was 
April the 6th. I heard a Christian Development Center threw a celly at him. Adam, what's his name? What's Ventura. Adam. Ventura. Uh, How many of you know him? Uh, oh, <coughs> okay, he was my celly, and he 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 had nothing but great things to say about Christian Development Center and Pastor Keith. And I didn't know you at the time, Miss Carol, or, or any of that. But uh, I know God knew I needed to be here. I have grown to love these guys and the Pastor Keith and Sister Carol. Uh, y'all mean a lot to me. I mean, I, I don't know. Y'all just mean a lot to me. Well, y'all have done a lot, not just for me, but everybody in this room. And I, I just hope that everybody kind of feels the same thing I feel, you know, and you yeah. allow God yeah. to, be, to work in you like yeah. it. Pastor Keith preaches all the time because I come from a Baptist background and I was a deacon in the Baptist church, a lifetime deacon. I was ordained lifetime deacon. That don't make me nobody. That's just someone that helps the pastor, you know. But uh, I know how important this is and what it what it means to me. And I, like I said, I just want everybody to, to really work on that or just allow the Spirit to flow and, and move because God is real. But on my testimony, uh, on my last page. That's all right. You got plenty of time. Uh, like I said, I have three, three brothers. I'm uh, the third. You know, I got two older brothers and my younger brother John. But when I turned 12 years old, me and my three brothers was in my oldest brother's car. It was a Saturday morning. We were going somewhere. It was raining. This morning, that morning, excuse me, and I was sitting on the passenger side of the back in the back seat. We went across an intersection of Lakeshore and Hern Avenue. Mm -hmm. You know where that's at? Ooh, yes. And uh, we had the green light, and it was raining, like I said, and we, we were going through the intersection. And there was a puffwood truck loaded down with puffwood <coughs> that was coming down uh, Hern. And I could, I could see that I felt like he was going too fast to stop. But anyway, he hit us. Supposedly his brakes fell, but he hit us dead center, and I was on the side he hit, but I was in the back. Mm -hmm. it, it pushed us off to the curb from this puppet. I mean, if he down the puppet, it went another 30, 40 yards before it actually stopped. But uh, at that time, outside of just being bruised and shaken up, the cop got there. And this is what really scared me. He said, first things out of his mouth, he said, y'all are lucky to be alive. <clears throat> and I, whoa. He said, if it wasn't, if it, if it would have not been raining, he would have plowed and rolled right over y'all. <clears throat> and that's my, that's how I've become to know the Lord because I was scared. I almost lost my life, and that went with me for weeks before I accepted Christ as my personal Savior. Wow. But uh, in my testimony, I tell, <coughs> and it's true, I feel like I was born on the front pew of the church. We went to church every time the doors were open. My parents made sure we were there. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night visitation, and whatever else there was. And that was my whole life. But anyway, I was scared and scared and you know, almost died for weeks and weeks, like I said. But the first Sunday, I went to church, and God was pulling at me to walk that aisle and make that decision. I resisted Him. The second Sunday came by, and it was the same thing, except God, 
God was really, I mean, I was probably just gibbering everywhere, you know, because I knew he was calling me up there, but I wouldn't go. That third Sunday, I got up and walked the aisle and got saved. Prayed the sinner's prayer and I got saved. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, this is, God struck me dead right now. The fear of dying left me at that time. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about any of that. Mm -hmm. You know, because I know where I'm going to be when I go when I die. And I mean, that's, I can almost remember saying it now as, as, as actually when it happened. It was that, I mean, it was just like, I'm ready to go, Lord, whenever, whenever you call me. But anyway, I just appreciate to you, Miss Carol, and everybody here. I love every one of y'all, and if I can help in any way, I would, I would, uh, invite you to come to me and sit down and pray and talk about anything. Uh, I'm here for y'all. You know, we're here for all three children, so just thank y'all for giving me the time. Thank you for sharing the story. Anybody got a question for Rick? What did you think when you first heard about us and, and you made the decision to come here? What was going through your mind? Well, <coughs> you know, I stayed in the motel for a week after that, and I think my brother was called me. Uh huh. If you remember that, John. And he's the one that came and picked me up. And then he told me, he said, you, you need to call back your keys. I said, I will, I will. And then I called you, and we had a good conversation. Mm -hmm. And God was just pulling me. I knew I needed to be somewhere that was spirit fed, spirit -fed, spiritually led and into these kind of meetings that we have. That's what allowed me to grow and I want to grow more and more. I, I, I can't, I never heard of a Christian Development Center and I've been here my whole life. But I'm, I'm glad I heard of it. I'm glad Adam told me because I'm happy. I think Adam's coming here when he comes back. I know. Yes. Well, he told me that. Of course, that never. We don't know what's going to happen until he gets out. Then he has to make up no, a decision. He's, I thought you didn't have. Uh, he's got another month or two, I think. <coughs> well, I got a number on him in his family. Yeah, I know where he's by, at. By. I, I see him when I go on Friday. Do you tell him I'm here? Uh huh. What do you say? Well, I I don't think I've seen him <coughs> since that. He's working. They got him working, and, and they're, they're, what shall I say, it's a hard place to get in and talk to anybody there. At, right. At the, the, and that's where I really wanted to go, to that facility there, because I've never been there, and, and there's nobody that goes there. Nobody. Right. Mm -hmm. On Fridays, uh, I'm the only minister that comes there, and... Five or six uh, uh, other other groups come, but they're not Christian group. Right. The Jehovah Witnesses come, and I, and I don't have nothing bad to say about Jehovah right. Witnesses. Right. Uh, that's that's their, uh, and they got a lot of good things going. But uh, so that's kind of <coughs> what uh, what I'm doing. So I'm I'm looking, and I think this could be a good opportunity for us. For somebody that's really interested in getting involved in the prison ministry, it'd be a good place for you, me to get you, and where I can, where we can kind of train you and kind of learn what, what to do and what not to do, uh, in the prison ministry. But it's it's good, and, and I'm so glad you're here, Rick. I, well, I'm uh, glad to be here. I'm I really just uh, I've had some. What shall I say? I've had some. Let me give you a hug, brother, because I'm. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Love you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord you. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Rick comes over to the office every day because he's he says he he sees an opportunity, and we're working on that opportunity to develop. If this goes with anybody else, you see an opportunity and you start volunteering, that opportunity will develop into a job. Right. It will develop into that. 
So I'm really thankful for Rick and for everything that he's doing. I got uh, a question. Okay, when you came here, were you already spirit filled, speaking in tongues? Uh, no, ma'am. I well, was not speaking in tongues. How did how did that happen? And then it's tell just, the people on the internet. I just allowed the spirit to flow through me. <laughs> Do what now? I just allowed the spirit to, th to flow through me. Okay. Were you in service <laughs> when it happened, or? Were you in your room, or what? Somebody well, lay hands I, I on was, you? Like I said, being a Baptist, uh, <laughs> there's not a lot of speaking in tongues, but I've read over the scriptures, and it's on these sheets here that you know, that's all biblical. And mm -hmm. I've just started exercising that. Amen. Um, I mean, it's real to me now. Yes. It's not, it's not just a bunch of words. When we laid hands on you that Sunday, <coughs> we asked you what your needs were. Remember what a couple of us? And you said, oh, just everywhere. Can you testify that you have improved or do we need more of it or what? Well, I mean, I'm, there's always room for improvement. Right, but, but could yeah. you tell the people on the internet, did you feel anything after that that you said, yes, I'm healed of that or I was delivered or... I'm just wanting us to yes, get all I our testimonies. Yes, I was healed and delivered. Yes, ma'am. Good. Yeah, yes. Amen. It worked. It worked. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Any other questions you have for him? Go ahead. How do you feel now, brothers? You know, <coughs> when you're going in, coming out, how do you feel? You, you know. Going in, like, yes. in jail? No, no. I'm talking about the way you were before and then coming out. How you are oh, today? Yes, yes. Oh, I've always loved the Lord. Like I said, right, I've been right. saved since I was twelve. I ain't, ain't always right. been the Christian that we're supposed to be. I don't think none of us have. But that's right. Uh, we, I, I just the coming out part is just allowing the Spirit to come <laughs> through me. Amen. And that's that's happened to you. Amen. Uh, a lot of this stuff we don't do in the Baptist Church. But no, I kept this out a long time ago. This is some stuff, <laughs> this is some stuff I, fe I feel or have felt since I've been here. Because I'll be honest with you, I used to think they were crazy than that. Well, I, you know. You know, but now it's real in my life. Amen. It's real, real. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you can tell anybody. You can tell anybody, you know what, this is not crazy. No, it's this is not really crazy real. at all. It's, it's real. real. It's it, and it works. So it what does it do for you when you speak in tongues? What, 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 what actually does it do for you? Mm. The Spirit just flows through me and gives me peace. Okay, mm. peace. Peace. Uh, is there a scripture for that? Can anybody think of a scripture for that to back up what he just said? Oh, hmm? Isaiah had a good scripture about that. Everybody know what that one is? For with a stammering lip and another tongue will I speak to, this, I speak to this people. people. And this shall be the rest wherewith I will shall cause the weary to rest. And this shall be the refreshing. Amen. And they shall, oh, it didn't stop there. And they shall go backwards and be snared and taken. All of our lives, I think most of us have wanted to do the right thing. Am I right? Yes. Well, we didn't, but somehow we found we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. And one of the things that I really want every one of us to learn is that this anointing right here, this anointing does not lie. This is the very first thing that Brother Pruitt kept just harping on it. Can I say harp on it? Just kept talking about it. Kept talking about it. He said, 1 John 2.27. I had no clue what it really meant until as I moved and I began to realize, oh, that's what it means. Yes, yes. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. In you. That anointing which, you have, which is the power of the Holy Spirit that you receive from Jesus does what? Abides where? In you. Never leaves you. You know, we hear people say, well, boy, he got hit by the Holy Ghost last night. Man, you could have heard the Holy Ghost. We hit him real good last night. Well, no, he just released the Holy Ghost and let it watch and work in him. That's all that really happened. 
But to going backwards, remember how we have been moving here with the gift of faith. How many of you have experienced when we laid hands on you with the gift of faith? What did that do for you? So 11, 28, 11. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it brought peace. Huh? It brought peace. It brought peace. It brought comfort. It brought comfort. Energizing. Energizing you. Okay. Amen. Okay, what else? It brought confidence. Took away all that, you know. Here, you know, felt like right the weight of the world been taken huh? off your shoulders. Felt like the weight of the Lord. The weight of the world been taken <coughs> off your shoulders, uplifted. Yes. Okay. Yes. Carol had been here in the last couple of weeks when we've been releasing the gift of faith and, and releasing that power in your life. Focus. <laughs> but, but it works. Yes. And this was one of the, the major workings of the Spirit that brought such a release in my life. And allowed me to begin to move forward uh, from the very beginning. So, go ahead. I have two, I have two uh, uh, verses I'd like to share if that's okay. That would be great. Go ahead. Uh, First Corinthians chapter two, four and five. It says, "In my speech and my message were not possible impossible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power." So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Mm -hmm. That's good. Amen. You want to expound on that a little bit? What that? You, you had a revelation on that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's fine. Go ahead. Uh, just saying that. Well, uh, So I said resting in the wisdom of men, which would, uh, I'm, I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking that's to be the flesh. Uh -huh. We're resting in the, in the spirit, the power of the spirit. That's right. And you're right. Do I use a lot of fancy words? Just be honest with me. Scale of one to ten. What would you say my words are? Are they fancy or are they without? I mean, they're understandable. They're understandable, aren't they? So... Paul said he didn't come to you with a demonstration in with having fancy speeches. But he came to you in demonstration of the spirit and power so that you would understand that the gospel is what? The power of God. It's alive. Of uh, what? It's alive. It's alive. It Amen. works. Yeah. Now why do we resist that power of God? Why do we say, and you don't know how many months I have worked and how many people I've worked with. And some of you have been here now for a while, and I've got my broke through to you. But when you first come here, Ricky, there for a while you said, I don't need all that. I was a mess. Huh? I was a mess. <laughs> you was a mess. So did you ever think, well, I don't need all of that? No, I eventually accepted it and was glad, to, glad that I know that. Okay. Amen. Uh, who's been here longer than about like Ricky? Who's been here a while? You've been here, John, okay? You, you've done, you haven't really been bold about what's going on. Uh, what's your biggest hurdle that you had to cross over to begin to realize this is really real? Uh, well, it was uh, probably speaking in tongues. Okay. So um, I'm still working on it though. Okay. So you got a few words you can say. Yeah. In your in your closet or when nobody can well, hear. Well, I, I can speak low, but when I go to go high, it just it shuts down. It shuts down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That ever happened to anybody else? Oh yeah. All right, there was Lewis. What happened to you the other night, Lewis, when you was up here? Because there's been a change in you since that time when we released the gift of faith in your life. What, what, what happened? I mean, I just gave it to God, and uh, I think we talked last week about my being a little more timid. Uh huh. I just decided to let put it behind me and let the power of God and Amen. let the, my yeah. anointing. Yes. Yes. Hello. And you're what? Feel better? Feels better. A lot better. A lot better. All right. So. What hinders us more than anything else? Some of you that are new, or some of you that uh, ourselves, ourselves, yeah, ourselves, ourselves. ourselves. Now, you shouldn't be ashamed here because we're what? Family. 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 Right. Right. 
So you remember how easy it is? I showed you how you can, what the scripture says about being filled with the Spirit. God tells you to not be drunk with wine, but be what? Filled with the Spirit. Spirit. So how do I get filled with the Spirit? And you know, I wish people understood this. How do you get filled with the Spirit? Ask for it. Yeah? Receive You're it. brand new, so I'm going to help you out a little bit too there. Mm -hmm. After, that's the first step. Ask for it. Amen. I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many of you remember the the working of Jesus with the woman at the well? Mm -hmm. What happened there? What happened at that well? What happened at that? Drank of me. Hmm? Drank of me. And you you know, so yeah, but what really, let's get a little bit more clear on that. So, mm -hmm. Max, you probably can explain it real clear. Oh, Lord. Uh, oh, Lord. <laughs> 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 oh, Lord. I like to put people on the spot. The woman at the well. Um, yeah, she she had she had a mess going on too in her life. <laughs> she, she, she had a mess going on too. She uh, she, yeah. I, uh, I, actually, that scripture uh, shows us that what, whatever our mess is, the Lord can clean it up. Amen. That's a good point right there. Yeah. No matter what our mess is, but how did He clean it up? He didn't clean it up by trying to make you memorize verses or stuff like that. He cleaned it up by what? Carol. He told her that she said, do you want water? I'm paraphrasing. And he said, if you knew what I had, you'd be asking me for water. And then he talked about that heavenly water. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's flowing out of him. And that's our chance to breathe in that water and drink that water. Eternal. That's what it means. But now, he, he, she looked at him like he was crazy, didn't yes. she? Right. She said, you ain't even got a pot. You telling me you're going to give me water? Mm -hmm. You don't have a well. I've got one right here. You see this well? This has got water, real water in it. Right. And we go back to, uh, we can go back to John, what is it, 7... 735, 36, Yeah, 37. when he told them uh, that... Uh, that out of their belly would flow rivers of living water, which again is the power of the Holy Ghost. And it even confirms it because the next verse says, And this he spake of the Holy Spirit, which had not yet been given because he had not be yet been uh, ascended. Mm -hmm. So it's that drinking. All right, so now the Holy Spirit is not a person. I know we've been taught that. Many of us, some of us haven't, but the Holy Spirit takes on many different forms. What are some of the forms that it takes on? Wind. Wind. Air. Air. Fire. Fire. Rain. Peace. Huh? Rain. 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 Yeah, rain's yes. on you. Yes, yes, sir. That's right. Yes. What else? Speaking in tongues. Yeah, but it takes on forms of many different forms. And what is the purpose of each form that the Holy Spirit takes on to do what? Deliver God's blessing. Yeah, I'll deliver it. But yeah, but let's be a little bit more specific about it. To reveal Jesus to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, Jesus is what? A spiritual person, isn't he? Right, right. Can you right. know this spiritual person with your own natural instincts no. and your own natural feelings? No, no. No, you can't. You can't know him. You can't see him. You can't feel him. You can't do anything with your natural senses. So you need what? To become spiritual, you have to become what? Yielding to the spiritual power Amen. that moves you into what? A spiritual realm. Lord Jesus. Lord, Lord Jesus. Move me into that spiritual realm. Lord Jesus. Now, God has a way, and you got you want a good chapter there, brother. In the first Corinthians, the first and second chapter. Uh -huh. Talks a lot about God has chosen in the foolish things of the world, and found the wise. Uh, all these things eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. What God has prepared for them that love Him. But and we all say, well, I guess you'll never know until you die. But the Spirit has shown it to them. But they didn't That's read the next verse. Hmm. And the next verse starts with, but God hath revealed it unto us by His Spirit. Spirit. Mm -hmm. 
So the more you yield to the Spirit, the more you're going to be able to what? Lay hold on these spiritual things that are moving all around you right now. <coughs> Do you understand and believe there is a host of angels all around us yes. right now? Yes. Yes. How many of you think you've been blown hot air? No. There is a host of angels all around us right yeah. now. Right here. Right here. Yes. Now, how do you know that, Keith? Because it's written. Because it's written yes. in the scriptures. That's what he does. There is a cloud of glory situated over your head about that high right now. Amen. A tent of glory that's situated over your head. How do you know that, Keith? Because it's written in the Bible. But the Spirit will let you feel it and sense it yes. if you really want to let it work in your life. So how would I make that a reality or or how would I know if it's real? Because I can't say, you know, there's an angel there and, and I see those, I see that host, I see them in my mind. I see that host of angels, but I also see that cloud of glory. But if I make my confession, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. you have covered me with a cloud of glory. With a cloud of glory. Your tabernacle, Your tabernacle is now covering us. Is now covering us. Now all I have to do is say, Lord Jesus, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus I, accept I accept that tabernacle. Is that tabernacle. Then I slowly raise my hands. Now don't get real fast. Get real slow. Just real slow. Now when you feel the sense and feel it, you stop. You feel it right there? I move them up a little bit higher. Into that tabernacle. Mm. Oh, it gets so good, huh? Yes, huh? yes. It gets pretty good there when you raise it real high. It gets louder. It gets louder. It gets louder. Now you can grab that right there, what you got. Just grab it with your hands and slowly bring it down. Slowly. Don't go real fast. Slowly bring it down and you'll sense when it starts coming down over your head. When did it hit your head? Yeah. Feel it, don't you? Yeah. Then you bring it down over your face. It's at my eyes right now. Bring it out over my cheeks. Bring it out over me. Ooh, you can feel it, can't you? Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. Can you feel it? Yes, sir. You feel it, don't you? Hallelujah. You feel it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Now that that is the power of all. Now then, even though that tent of glory has filled and saturated this room, the power of the Holy Spirit has filled this whole room for you to begin to easily begin to drink of that water of life by simply making a simple confession. Always, always, don't get in a big hurry, just make a simple confession, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. The heavenly, the air that I'm breathing is your heavenly air. Heavenly power of the Holy Spirit. Now just take a real deep breath and hold it. What do you feel? Mm. Mm. What do you feel? <laughs> you feel something? Mm -hmm. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, it will do what? Quicken your mortal body. Amen. It will. It brings alive. Yes. Now there's a scripture in the Bible where Jesus says, And I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. And I was thirsty and you gave me something to what? Drink. Drink. How many of you remember that scripture? What's he talking about? Jesus needs food. Food. What kind of food does he have? Does he eat potatoes? Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. Spaghetti? Nope. nope. Y'all had lasagna tonight. It was good. Is that what he eats? Mm -hmm. nope. Spirit. 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 <laughs> but his food is the word of God. Amen. The scriptures. The promises. That's his food. Feed him those promises. Feed him. I am a new creation. Yes, Lord. I am more than a conqueror. I have Jesus Christ Lord in Jesus. me. I have Christ in me. Let's do that right now. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I have, I have Christ, in Christ, me. Christ in me. Now there's a time that you want to speak a real bold and loud, but then there's also a time when you want to do it in a mellow tone. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, as you are, as you are, so am I. So am I. 
you. Lord Jesus. Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. As you are. As, as you are. are. So am I. So am I. In this present world. In this present world. You live in me, Jesus. You live in me, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You are my helper. You are my helper. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, you go before me. You go before me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, you open doors. You open doors. No man shuts them. No man shuts them. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I can speak to a mountain. I can speak to a mountain. Commanded to move. Commanded to move. It hath moved. It hath moved. Now you're not talking about uh, sand mountains. He's not. He's talking about mountains that come in your life. They speak to them and command them to move. Be released from them. Yes. Now then, let's go a step further now. I want to get filled with, I want to be so full of the Spirit that it flows out of me. So I begin to drink. Yes. Any, anybody here had a uh, past history and a lifetime of uh, learning how to drink alcohol? <laughs> okay, so we know what that means. Don't we? we know what drinking means. You know? So you drink and you get what? Drunk. drunk. So now you can drink now and get drunk too. I need a lot. And, but the one thing about this, you get no hangover. Earthquake spirit. Well, there's no hangover. It's like a volcano coming down in the winter time I drank. It comes right back up. Yeah. No more. <laughs> Lord Jesus. So Lord let's make Jesus. our confession. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. My faith. My faith. I drink. I drink. I do live water. You live water. Now just breathe again. Bring it in. Let it out. Now when you drink it in again. Now you let it out. Now we get you filled on top of the water. You want liberty in the spirit? It used to be when I first started speaking in tongues, it would be I would just have to kind of force myself to speak in tongues. Anybody know what I'm talking about there? Okay. What's happening? You're not drinking. Not exactly right. You drink. When he gets full, Jesus said, if you if you come to me on the water I give you is going to be a what? A well springing up in you. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. A river doesn't have to get plugged out. A river just flows. So you want to learn to drink. You want to learn to let it... Now, if you want to keep yourself in peace in your daily life. How many of you would like to have your mind just at rest and peace all day long? Yes. Little something. Yes. Little something. You just say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. By faith. By faith. I drink peace. I drink, I drink peace. peace. And then what do you do? Yes. And then you just shut up. You just come up. Works done that Antonio. <laughs> They shall be led forth in peace. Led forth, how what are you being led? By the Spirit. In peace. And as you begin to let this anointing work in you and flow in you consistently, and you start going the wrong way, something in there is going to stop you. It won't be me, nor it will be the Spirit. And you say, uh-uh, uh-uh. I love Oh, Jesus. All shall be taught of the Lord. Did you ever hear us preaching against sin? Did I ever preach against sin? 
I love y'all. Anybody got something you want to say? Something else? You I just got one question. Well, I never did hear you mention children. Mm -hmm. Do you have children? I do. I'm sorry. Uh, I got a daughter that's 41, and I have two grandbabies from her, and a son that's uh, 39. So, have they? Do they know about you being filled with the Spirit yet, and all that good stuff? Uh. Sorta. My daughter presently ain't speaking to me, so that's another story. But yeah, we won't get into that's okay. That. I just wondered but, you didn't uh, mention kids. Yeah, they know. I mean, I, we raised them up in church ever since they were in the nursery on up. And, uh, Good. So you got this uh, two children. Yes, sir. Okay. And I have uh, three grandbabies. Okay. Okay. I just like. Oh. I just like to uh, make a statement on that about your daughter. Uh, not speaking to, um, I went through that, you know, because I hurt my kids, you know, doing 21 years of prison, uh, and I'm getting them back in my life now, you know, like, well, and I good. just want to tell you that love yeah, forgives, so don't give up. No, I'm not, that's a good point, uh, I, I will say a little bit about it, uh, when I was incarcerated, she was handling my checkbook, and, uh, she would put money on my commissary for me to get stuff from the store. But over an eight month period, there was about $11,000 that was, was used. And I didn't find out nothing about it until after I got my bank statements. As a matter of fact, I got my bank statements on the month that were in question. And my bank mailed it to me at Bossier Mac. But she's, I'm done forgiving her in my heart, but she's having a hard time facing up to me because she told her mother that she realized that she's done wrong. And and that's all I want to hear, you know. I would, It's my daughter. I'm not going to do right. nothing to, that's right. you know. But anyway, yeah, pray about that because yeah. I'm, I'm wanting to revive that relationship with us.